Welcome back to Squawk Box. Our next next guest joins us to highlight three stocks in his portfolio that have hit all-time highs just within the past couple of weeks, and he thinks they're going to go even higher. Here with us to discuss it all is Bill Smead, Chief Investment Officer of Smead Capital Management. We want to start this morning, and we got the we got the Telestrator here, oh. so we get to we get to make all sorts of you know designs. So I can say, is this going to go up, or is this going to go down? That's the question of the morning. Here so we. okay. Let's start with this. We got Target, we got Walt Disney, and we got JP Morgan, all which have been on a huge run. Mm-hmm. And so the question is, if you're if you own these stocks, should you hold them or should you keep going? Right. That's always the great question. The index's advantage over most portfolio managers right. is they never get out of the way of their best performing stocks. Yes. Right? So they never sell too soon on a stock that goes up fifty times. And, and as portfolio managers, you have to hold your winners to a fault. In the case of Target, yep. as just one example, it's had, as you can see, it's had a nice little run up here. So as a long- Look at you look, with the telestrator. Here we go. As a long-term investor, yeah. you, you know that it could pull back 10, 15%, even 20%. But uh, over the next 10 years, there are 90 million millennials right. that are having kids and buying kids' apparel. They sell Carters at Target, and their apparel sales were up 10%. And we're at the early stages, stages. Okay. of aggregating them. So you might go you know, down here and then up here on the next leg, and you'd feel really bad if you sold it here. Okay. Let's, uh, let's talk about the next one on our list as we flip it around and show everybody Walt Disney. If we can. If we can. If we can. If we can't, that's okay. We can just make a smiley face on there this thing. There we go. Okay, so look at, look at this thing. This has been on an incredible run. Yeah. The question, well, there's a short-term question and a long-term question. Mm-hmm. Short-term question is actually whether you think it continues to go higher, right. given and what kind of news we'll get on Disney Plus in terms of subs, right? right? That's, that's going to be the next catalyst. And then sort of long-term, by the way, even if Disney Plus works, what you think of the rest of the business, especially the business that's connected to linear television. Right. So, so uh, first off, in this particular case, you've had a, a nice run-up, although what you don't see here is the prior three or four years the stock had languished right. for quite a while. Secondly, at the current interest rates, most your major highly thought of growth companies trade at 25 times earnings, which is about where Disney is right now. Okay. A, a better question with Disney, uh, whereas it, it might do this for a while, is did the people that went on Disney Plus right. watch something that they really liked? Right. Because I'm seeing advertisements for Netflix talking about uh, the, Irishman. Uh, the, the Irishman. I saw The Irishman yes. in Milan in a movie theater. And by the way, the Italians love Scorsese and they love Tarantino. Right. Right. And I'm a Godfather guy to the core, right? I love those gangster movies. And, and I love those actors. And I was checking my watch at two hours on a three-and-a-half-hour movie. And, and I just heard today that, that uh, 26 million people, they said, watched at least 70% of it. Right. That's about the time I checked out mentally was about 70% of the way into the show. So you watched it in a theater instead of watching it at home when you can check back out and back in. We've changed the No, nah, if it's not a good movie, it doesn't, doesn't make any difference. And, and, and I am, I mean, literally, I don't watch Diane Keaton movies because she, she, her, her character aborted Michael Corleone's baby right. in The Godfather. <laughs> Okay. okay, and you and, can relate that back to the Disney stock. And, and, and because the, everything that's on Disney Plus, the people that watch it are delighted. Right. Because content is king. Now, there are a ton of kids coming along. A child is born in the United States, regardless of socioeconomic background, and a child is a customer of this company. Okay. How many bathroom breaks, Bill? Got okay, tell, I no, made it no. all the way through. That's a good question. Did you really? I mean, tell me what you think, though, of J.P. Morgan, Morgan, which again also yeah. has been on a nice little run. So this is fascinating. Uh, uh, you know, I, I at Smith Barney years ago for 12 years, I worked with Jamie Dimon. Yep. So during the time that Jamie Dimon was working Sandy Weil, they kept talking to people about before we get done, we're going to get to a 15 multiple with this. Uh, 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 they ended up merging with Citigroup. And, and in this particular case, in the 1960s, when the economy was pretty good and rates were rising, right. the multiples on these banks went into the 15 to 17 world. They've been stuck at a 12 multiple at best. And remember how hated these businesses right. were. Now, 90 million millennials have not been liability customers of the banks. And one of the most profitable things the bank does right. is make those loans. So, yes, it could correct temporarily. Right. But then, of course, when it gets done doing that over the next five years, you might go back to this right. and have a lot of fun in the process. Bill, thank you. Thank you.